As we begin every show, we're going to start this thing off with our drink for the day. Today's drink is... We are drinking Pink Rose. Yay! <laughs> so, tell us about the drink. It is a fruity Spanish rosé with fresh aromas of strawberries, raspberries, and cherries. It is beautifully balanced with a refreshing crispness, crispness, and soft brown finish. Wonderful on its own or as a complement to cold salads, cheeses, and spicy foods. Mm, you know what my sister likes to put? Strawberries and sometimes grapes in her drink. So that should be really tasty. Now you tell me. Yeah. We could have done that today. I know. I'm sorry. So, um, as we had mentioned before, we have a couple of quick announcements. One. <gasps> and let's cheer again. Cheer! <laughs> it calls for another cheer. We will be all added to iHeartRadio. Yes. So that is amazing. I'm so excited. Are you excited? I'm now? super excited. Yeah. So today is kind of like a celebration. It's at a the celebration same time. of sorts. Yes. We iHeartRadio status. Boy. We're iHeartRadio status styling. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that we had been talking about or um, we've been promoting the Overtown Music and Arts Festival. And so being as such, we both went. Yeah. And, you know, kind of did a little quick tour for myself. I, I went in and took pictures and actually saw some friendly faces. And I said, today we wanted to talk about festivals and the influences on inner cities or in black communities. And so we have two, two special, not one, not one, but, but two, two special guests. We will allow guest number one to introduce himself. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Yes. Good afternoon, ladies. Um, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. I am Elijah John Boudre, Special Project Specialist um, for the City of Miami. Great. Yay! Our second guest will be on a little bit later. And so, it's a surprise. And it's, and it's a surprise. We're not going to tell you. So, John, tell us how did you get involved with the festival? Um, well, specifically, <clears throat> the festival that we attended uh, yesterday, uh, the Overtown Music and Arts Festival, um, primarily I'm involved because I am a resident. I am a resident of Overtown, and as such, uh, it was organized uh, for my community. Great, great. I know that, um, what was it, Commissioner? Keon Hardiman. Yes. Is he commissioner or is yes? Correct, John. He's a commissioner of Overtown or Miami that district. Um, well, like I said, um, there were vendors, food mm -hmm. vendors, and a lot of people that had displays of arts, and you know, I guess in general, it kind of got us to thinking what. You know, where do you see, John, like the, the impact of these festivals in, in communities? Particularly not, the black, black community. Particularly the black community. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> community festivals, uh, I believe, are something that are imperative um, um, for, for every community. Uh, in whatever form that is appropriate uh, and that is necessary to, one, um, reflect the spirit of, of that neighborhood uh, and of the people that inhabit it, uh, to, two, be a platform uh, in which that those uh, inhabitants as well as others can come and uh, network, um, therefore enhancing um, the dynamicism of that community, um, but also to promote to be a vehicle to promote that area. Uh, Overtown uh, is the most important part of Miami, uh, probably of all of Florida. Uh, and so it's a national treasure. Right? Um, the history and the contributions that it's had uh, for the world um, are often lost or mired within um, the uh, uh, negative publicity 
or the framing uh, of this area of the people, which we almost can try. Um, but we combat actively uh, and consciously against that. And having something like the Overtown Music and Arts Festival is one very um, dynamic way uh, to display the richness of the culture uh, and the love of the people and the quality um, of Old Town. You know what I thought was interesting? This was, an, uh, this was a festival. I've gone to other festivals before. I'm sure many of the people that are listening. This was free. So I thought that was really an interesting perspective. How does that, you know, I guess with the different vendors that come to the city, the artists and promoting the historic, Overtown, uh, you know, location. Uh, where, how, I mean, if you've worked on other festivals or have any um, insight on how festivals normally run, how does that differ than like an Essence Festival or like we are now, you know, because we're in South Florida, we have Jazz in the Gardens, which is also a huge festival that does positively impact our South Florida community. What is, what's the difference there? Well, um, surprisingly, the Overtown Music and Arts Festival uh, is still in its infancy. It, um, I'm fairly new uh, to well, you know, returning back in America and, uh, and living here in Miami. Uh, I'm you know, being from Long Beach, California. Um, but now Overtown resident. Surprisingly, it's, 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 it's barely three years old. Um, but is a dynamic event that is now a staple and, and, and has weaven itself, excuse me, woven itself into the fabric and the story of, of Overtown and of all of Florida, uh, I would say. Um, the difference is the fact that um, because it is new and because the, the, uh, the area of Overtown has been uh, so disadvantagedly um, oppressed, um, it needs all the help that it can get. Right? And help, support, contributions, prayers, goodwill, and patronage. Uh, and so, right, you, um, if you have a spark and you're lucky to get an ember, um, you know, you don't leave that ember uh, on its own to try to catch the tinder, but you, you tend to it and you nurture it and you and you blow on it so that it can catch until it can actually stand on the song and be something that um, uh, um, will grow and, and, and spread. Great. Um, I know, I, saw, I found this article, University of Minnesota Extension. It was about community festivals, big benefits, big but risks too. Uh, I know a, a, an aspect of boosting the economy with... Seeing that this was free and a lot of people were, you know, in town, uh, what happens is in, uh, visitors spend money, which boosts the local economy, both on and off sites. Uh, on site spending includes ad admission fr fees, which we did not have, parking fees, but there was food and beverage and souvenir sales and more. Uh, there was an example of a 2001. Uh, fair in Minnesota that spent an average of fifty dollars at the festival. Offsite spending related to festivals generates revenue for communities. For example, visitors stop at local gas stations, souvenir shops, and restaurants, and the list goes on. So I guess again, what can I guess a lot of this is with the unique visitors that don't normally come to the inner city, in our, in our case, the, the Overtown area on a normal basis. But with this music festival, not only does it bring attention, attention to the visitors, it also um, creates opportunities for new people to see like the, the surrounding restaurants. I know there's a, there's a restaurant that you love going to, John, uh, and I actually had the opportunity of visiting myself. I think it's called, what, Green Light? Oh, uh, Little Greenhouse. Oh, Little yes. Greenhouse. Uh, Shouts out to Nicole. Oh, to Cafe. It's, all the homes over there. Again, Mar a wonderful place. Uh, I think a lot of people that are familiar with the downtown, overtown area, um, you know, goes to, like, Jackson's and 
you know, we're not too far from the AAA center and other places, but you don't get an, you don't typically see, you know, what are the local inner city or black uh, owned businesses that, that are surround there. And, and that restaurant in itself is like, you know, have some really great food and things to sample. And, and for those of you that are not from South Florida, um, we, we tape in South Florida. Um, that's our home base. Um, so for those of you that are not from South Florida, um, Overtown is a pretty rough, known to be a pretty rough community. Um, However, they are rebuilding it, mm-hmm. and this is kind of like a historic um, section in Miami, Florida. It's maybe about 10, 15 minutes away from South Beach. Yeah. Um, and we have in the South Florida area quite a few music festivals. Many of you have probably heard of Jazz in the Gardens. That happens like in the March um like around March every year. And um, this one in particular, the Overtown Music and Arts Festival, it happens in July. So those of you that want to come next year, um, feel, free. feel free, start planning now. Um, it was a very, very, you know, good event. I'm just going to tell you some of the artists that were there this year. Um, CeeLo performed um, in a circle who's um they're local however we know them from the song bad boy bad, bad boys, boys bad boys what you gonna do exactly what you gonna do if you come for- okay sorry um rl know. from next perform um it was hosted by monica. it was hosted by monica keisha cole keisha cole was performed um um what it, they're called um rough ends I think that's the name of the group. Oh, uh, where RL came from? I, I, no, it's another group uh, oh. called Rough Ends that performed. Um, and then there were local artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually you're going to meet one of the artists that also performed yes. um, in a few minutes. So it is a reputable um, festival. It was a pleasure being there for me. Yeah, I, um, it was. A, this was actually my first time yes. going as well. I saw it uh, last year, and it was well attended, in my opinion, from the videos that I saw. Uh, and a, a, another quick fact, it's the, the area is probably like a few blocks away from Art Basel. Yes, from Wynwood. Uh, from, from the Wynwood community. Right. And, and I know that Wynwood and the Art Basel Festival is an international yes. event. So again, we're just kind of spotlighting uh, Overtown Music Festival because there are so many other events like Art Basel, like uh, a Jazz in the Gardens, like Essence Festival that is, that's taking place all over the country, all over the world. But, uh, you know, our concern has always been on how do we better our own communities mm-hmm. and how do we bring attention to it? And, and, and visiting and attending the Overtown Music Festival was just one of those uh, opportunities. John, do you want to add any um, insight or things that maybe we had not discussed or mentioned about its impact and like what are the other things that um, I guess these type of events due to the community at large? Well, um, there are many impacts uh, from an event uh, on this scale. Um, it estimates uh, up to 3,000 people to serve um, <clears throat> here. Can you... Oh, sorry. So, some of the most immediate uh, impacts... Uh, as I mentioned before, is providing a space where other people can feel comfortable to come into Town. Mm-hmm. Um, like you mentioned, as you guys mentioned earlier, it's, um, you know, Overtown is one of the uh, areas um, in Miami that needs, that ha- that faces some of the most uh, severe challenges. Um, what, are, what are some of those challenges? Uh, well, uh, a lack of uh, uh, support uh, from the government. Um, a, a, a high um, neglection uh, from local as well as surrounding communities, a, I would say, a perception of danger. Um, 
primarily because um, it is the African American area of of the city, right, and uh, ha does face a high level of poverty. Um, um, and so, when you have areas like that, that's not they usually call those places uh, the ghetto, right? And there's already enough uh, pressures or um, forces that constrict the lives uh, and the struggles of, of people who live there. Um, so having a festival is one thing that allows them to look forward to it, to have a sense of pride. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Good, 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 good. So, you know, we wanted, we said that we have a second guest. Yeah, and we're not gonna say who he is. We're not gonna say who he is yet. I'm gonna give you a little intro. Yes, Melanie, take it away. Okay, so I'm gonna play a little snippet of a song, and then most of you will know who who our guest is, and then we're gonna let him introduce himself. <laughs> by now we have um r&b king of miami um who has performed at the overtown um music and arts festival two consecutive years and so we and he's also um born and raised yes. in miami so he's from and of the community let's introduce mr jay shin Welcome to the building. Hey, what's We're glad up? to have you here. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? I'm glad to be here. Great. Welcome, Jay. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Had an awesome day yesterday. Oh, you were performing at the uh, Overtown Festival. I know, I know. I was able to catch your performance online, and it looked like you really, really just... Move the crowd like you turned it out, like you do. Um, you know, give us some background for those that may not uh, be acquainted with you. What What do you want to share about yourself? And well, my name is Jonathan Shinholster, aka J Shin, born and raised in Miami. Um, I got into the music industry in um, the late '90s, um, hooking up um, with a good friend of mine. Um, Go by the name of TWD, Trick Daddy Dollars, that's Maurice Young. Um, I had a, a privilege of doing a, a, a single with him titled um, Hold On. Uh, it was a very interesting song at the time. Um, it was very well needed. Um, and again, it was about the struggles in the community and, and how we have to hold on, you know what I'm saying, to mm -hmm. fight uh, through all the discretions that goes on in the inner cities um, to get out. So uh, that was a, a pretty big move on my end, you know, as far as me coming in the industry. Um, after that, um, I had a, uh, a, a, a field day, a good time signed with Atlantic at the time being signed right. to them through Slip and Slide Records. Um, and that's when I hooked up and met um, a young lady you guys know. Um, she's a part of Escape, go by the name of Latasha Scott. Uh, I did the single with her title, One Night Stand, and sold over a million. Um, and after that, everything is history. Um, and that's why I'm here today, 2017, performing at the Overtown Festival. Well, we have to say we are so proud of you and honored that you took the time to come yes. and uh, be our guest today. Uh, like I said, you are homegrown. So I yeah. think, you know, maybe you, you can also share in the sentiments of what that type of festival coming into essentially your back, you know, in your neighborhood. What does that mean to you? 
Well, um, what it means to me, I think that was that's something that's needed. Um, I think it was like it's like the fifth fifth year or something they was doing a festival. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it was very well needed. Again, it's about community. That's something to bring the community together. Um, when you talk about the different boroughs, um, like Liberty City, um, you talk about um, Brown Sub, mm -hmm. uh, Miami Gardens. Um, right now they call Kara City Opalaka. Some people call it Chapalaka. Um, and then you also, you go down to the Spanish area, um, off the H street, you know, they got, uh, certain areas down there is pretty much challenged, you know, in the Spanish community. But, um, I think with the Overtown Festival, um, again, like I said, it's a great, uh, situation because it brings the community together mm -hmm. and it allows, uh, um, dialogue, uh, with some individuals that might not be able to connect with each other, mm -hmm. but because this type of event brings everybody together, it gives them an opportunity to go ahead and mingle and, and, and meet, you know, different people from different communities. Great, great, great. And so, um, you know me, I always have to bring in the, the, the children aspect yes. of it. And um, one of the cool things about this festival that I don't think I've seen at any other festival that I've attended is that they have a kid zone. And um, they have a lot of children from the community and different dance groups and singing groups. And um, I believe they even had an artist from Atlanta. Um, I can't remember her name. Um, that was on the show on Jermaine Dupree's show. She performed yesterday. Um, lyric. There, is, it, is it Lyric? Yeah. Lyric, yeah. Lyric. lyric yeah. She performed yesterday. And so for me, this... And, like I said, I've been to a lot of festivals, but normally it's like an adult thing. Mm -hmm. And what I did like about this festival is that there were children in the audience and it was a time for them to see, you know, adults interact in a positive way, which I think is great. Um, and there was a lot of food and um, like mm -hmm. drinks mm -hmm. and Everybody was getting along, and again in this rural area, with this is all. I mean, for me to see that, it was awesome. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that there were any, you know, violent measures reported. Um, so to plug, um, headliner music, um, headliner market group, you all did an awesome job at putting this event together. Um, and those of you that are not in the South Florida area, go ahead, start planning to be in the South Florida area next year in July because um, it was awesome. It was a great event. Yeah, again, they it brought not only national and international talent, We all they also appreciated and reached back into the local homegrown talent. And, you know, I don't know if too many people acknowledge or don't acknowledge, but uh, Jay, you've seen successes on a global scale which is amazing yeah. and I, you know i think that it's uh pretty awesome that they ask you to come and perform and you know i saw you t bring some women on the stage oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah, and they cool. were jamming and, and and dancing with you and again it was just the energy the energy that was there this was a free concert uh i mean a free festival and you know it, again it pulled local food, art, festivals, activities for kids. And, you know, it also had the local, um, the local elected officials that, that were involved that, again, I guess this is the areas that they served. Keon Hardiman did a great job in assembling or being a part of this event and headliner market marketing group, as we said before, uh, you know, this was, this was great for me. I really, you know, I'd love to see how this is going to, continue to grow and impact the the local area and it was so. cool because this was our first official um visit as a me media as, entity as i media. guess yeah. yeah so we had our little press passes and stuff so so that was, cool. that was great that was great i don't know if there's anything else that we oh we need to talk about reiterating the fact that people need to like get out there and vote for your um, for oh, local. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, you know, in addition to that, I mean, I had a very busy day. I was, I had to, I, I spent a few minutes, longer than a few minutes at the festival, but I had to dip out to support Annette Tadeo, who's running for state senate in District 40 in the South Florida community. Uh, this is a special election. It's really important. Uh, and, you know, for people that don't know, 
there is an election that's taking place July 25th. Uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to the fact that there are elections and, and opportunities to get the right individuals uh, in office all over the country. May not be happening today. In our case, we have a special election that's taking place right now. So I just wanted to acknowledge, hey, Annette, hey, Manny, and everyone else on the team, you know, uh, you know, please stay engaged in what's happening. And before we, you know, forget, you know, Jay, John, I don't know if you have anything that you wanted to promote. Yeah, your, your pages, uh, uh, you know, give the people something yeah. to look you up about. I mean, well, you can go, you can catch me on Facebook at Jay Shen Music Page. Um, and also on IG, Twitter, The Real J. Shen. Um, you can find me well. You know, you, you keep, you'll stay up to date on everything that's going on with me, uh, my career, um, and my um, future endeavors that's coming up. So you guys just stay tuned. Also, my clothing line, uh, Fans Authentic Worldwide. Yes. Yes. Um, is in the beginning stages. Um, but we're looking pretty good with that. Um, we have a couple of deals that, that, that I'm looking at right now. I'm just trying to take my time with it. But again, you know, just appreciate you guys tuning in. And I just want to say congratulations to you guys for, um, you know, getting that spot on iHeartRadio. Yes, I think that's a real you. big for our, our, our young yes. African-American sisters to be able to, you know, create a situation like this as far as podcasts and be able to, you know, hit our heart like that. That's that's really, oh, you know, that's big. You. So thank, thank you. 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 Thank God. For real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with that being said, John, do you have anything that you'd like to promote? How can people reach and find you? Well, I just would like to thank you guys for allowing me to be on. It's definitely been a lot of fun, a pleasure and an honor. And I really want to uh, say that I'm honored that your first official media event was in Overtown. That's, yeah. That's yeah. It. Yeah. We'll mark that in history. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, a year from now, when you guys got the big bucks and got the national syndication, <laughs> say it. Started, put, it it Say it. put it out there. Put it out there. Um, but um, yeah, thank you, and um, yeah, anytime you guys need me, I'm right here. So, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me uh, in Overtown. That's where I live. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I, I'm on the um on the Instagram as uh Lambo underscore Beaudre. Lambo. Um, underscore Beaudre. Great, yes. great, great. Well, you know, this was great. Our first follow-up on a festival being that we were media. I can't wait to go to Congrats, Kita. Congrats, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we like to end each show, uh, we want to encourage you guys to subscribe and follow us. Melanie, where can they find us? Oh, goodness. We are on social media. Social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Girl what? G-U-R-L and what? Um, personally, you can find me, Mel Shen, on Facebook. Or um, Mrs. Mel Shen on Instagram. Um, my- Don't forget, we're now going to be on iHeartRadio. Oh, Radio. yeah, iHeartRadio. And as soon as we get the link, we are going to post it. So be on the lookout for that. Yes, and you can find me, Makita McClune. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll you can- find everything you need to know on those pages, I think. Exactly. Uh, so, as we end our show on our verse, Colossians 1.16, all things have been created through him and for him. Well, again, you have tuned in. To- thank y'all. Thank, thank y'all you. For coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you have now officially tuned in to Girl. Girl. What?